Welcome to the 2023 ALCS. It's a Texas showdown. The battle out west. It's Texas versus Texas. Astros versus Rangers. All stars at every corner. Hall of Fame managers. Hall of Fame players. To state claim to Texas. To fly the pennant. Game one of the ALCS. Lone Star style. Welcome to downtown Houston, Texas. Once again, the October stage. And this time, it's an All-Texas Championship Series. Winner moves on to the World Series as we welcome you to the 2023 American League Championship Series on Fox, presented by Lone Depot, the Texas Rangers, and the defending champion, Houston Astros. We welcome you inside Joe Davis, the Hall of Famer John Smoltz. The Texas Rangers, two years removed from losing 100 games, are in the championship series for the first time in 12 years. Now, the Houston Astros, they looked vulnerable, as vulnerable as they've been in a long time, but they are back where they always seem to go in the championship series for the seventh straight season. Both these teams star studded. It seems evenly matched. And, John, you think this series has a chance to be a classic? I think it's going to be epic. I think both teams, as you mentioned, are, are as bought as matched. Maybe a, an uptick in the bullpen for Houston. But when you think about the paths each team has taken, especially Texas, I don't think they could ask for a better route to the World Series than to beat their division foes, the Houston Astros. Houston's been there, done that. Both managers been there, done that. Stars on both sides. I usually like pitching. We're going to see a lot of hitting. Let's talk about a couple of those hitters. The two hot hitters on the planet on display or Don Alvarez for the Astros Corey Seager for the Texas Rangers I just don't know how you stop Alvarez there's gonna be a chess match for Bruce Bochy and he's got some left handers to go to look at the numbers he just seems to rise to the occasion when the postseason shows up and he dominates you can't let him beat him beat you and for the other side the Texas Rangers they poured a lot of money into Corey Seager all he's done is delivered this year and I think for the Rangers, if they continue to win the two strike battles and take the walks, they've got a chance to defeat the defending champs, Houston Astros. Now for more on this matchup, we go down to the field. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Joe, this rivalry didn't truly take shape until 2013 when the Astros joined the AL West. In recent seasons, the Astros have been so dominant, the Rangers spent more than $800 million on free agents the past two winters just trying to catch up. That seemed likely to happen earlier this year when the Rangers spent 150 days in first place, but the Astros won the AL West on the final day in a tiebreaker. And here we have the ultimate showdown, a best of seven tiebreaker, not only for in-state bragging rights, but the American League title. Now over to Tom Verducci. Well, thanks, Ken. Justin Verlander has a game day routine. Wake up late, order in chicken Caesar salad and a cheeseburger, leave home at 2.45, stop for coffee on the way in. This is postseason start number 36 for Verlander, and the last two have shown how he can adapt based on what is working in the game. Game five of the World Series last year, a lot of high fastballs. Game one of the ALDS this year, 54% breaking pitches. Once Verlander is here on the mound in a postseason game, there is nothing routine about it. Joe. All right, Tom, and at 40 years old, a little detour, but he's back in Houston, and lately, John, he is back looking like an ace. He can do it all. I mean, I called him a 10-speak bike. Maybe he strips some gears as he's turned 40, but he can pitch to any con con any any continent, but any area of the strike zone, and he is ready, and the right guy, believe it or not, he's back in Houston. This is weird, isn't it? I mean, he goes to the Mets, comes back to the Astros, and here he is once again taking the ball in game one. The lineup it'll face off with is sponsored by IBM. It is the top lineup in the American League, and they have continued that here in the postseason with Simeon and Seager at the top. Mitch Garver got plugged into the lineup game two of the division series and hit a grand slam. And it's Adolis Garcia, the cleanup man. Evan Carter, the rookie, just debuted a little more than a month ago. He bats fifth, has been a revelation for the Rangers. Jonah Hyde catches. It's Low, Young, and Tavares to finish things up for Bruce Bochy. Tonight's fan duel live, same game parlay. Josh Young and Jordan Alvarez. That seemed like a pretty safe play there. Both those guys hot coming in. As we meet this series umpiring crew. Behind the plate is a first-timer in the championship series, Stu Sherwater. 
And Justin Verlander, for one, happy to have Stu there. He's unbeaten when Sherwater's calling balls and strikes. He's got a sub-2 ERA. That guy behind the plate. After a six-year playoff drought and after blowing the division in the final weekend, these Rangers have steamrolled their way to their first ALCS in 12 years. Seventh consecutive championship series for the Astros. And this All-Texas showdown lined up. Simeon stands in, and off we go with a swing and a foul ball down the line. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of early action with these first two hitters. And you know what? Justin Verlander is not afraid to use his fastball. First time through, he'll establish his fastball, look for that curveball that he can throw almost at will for a strike. He'll mix in his slider, but he is not afraid to attack early on with fastballs. This is the one guy in the Rangers lineup that has hit him hard. Two home runs for Simeon against Verlander. On the corner with a slider, and it's on two. And the beauty with him is that little slider right there might not look like much. is very effective. And there's the breakdown that you're going to see from Verlander. Watch as the game progresses. High fastballs against this Rangers team will be the key for Verlander. His 0-2 pitch dives down and away. Ball one. Six scoreless innings. Game one of the division series against Minnesota. Took him some time to find himself in that game. There was a bunch of traffic the first few innings, but as he so often does, figured it out. Just one base run over the last three. Is one two. Is bounced up the middle to a perfectly positioned Jose Altuve. His wide throw is pulled down by Abreu, and Abreu tags him for the first out. Oh, Abreu, taller first baseman here as the ball had some spin and then you see him put the tag right before he gets the foot to the bag and luckily did not hurt himself. So one gone. I'm going to get out of the way quickly here because I know Seager's probably swinging first pitch. How in the world are you pitching to this? He's going to attack him at least when everything that I've watched he's attacked him early with fastballs and then the second and third time around he changes his routine. Most aggressive hitter in baseball, Corey Seager. First pitch curve, grounded through the right side, and his monster postseason continues on the first pitch that he sees. You're right. You got to get out there fast because he's definitely created an awareness to everybody who faces him. It does not matter where that or what pitch it is. If it's in the zone, he's going to swing. And right away, he got a curveball and saw it up in his eyes and grounded it in. Now, this at bat here. You go into this at bat. He's been hot, but he is not like facing Justin Verlander. Mitch Garver, ball one. Now Garver got plugged in the lineup four games into their postseason. He hadn't played at that point. Bruce Bochy puts him right in the three spot. And what does he do? It's a grand slam. And the lineup didn't have him in there the day after that, but Bruce said, I've got a rule. You hit a grand slam, you're in there the next day. Here's a temper of Verlander. One, four, three. Off and rolling in the league championship series. The Astros come to bat when you come back. Go, it's easy to Geico. Back inside here in Houston, the Astros coming to bat with this lineup sponsored by IBM. It's Altuve and Bregman at the top, and then the monstrous Jordan Alvarez. Jose Abreu's gotten to go in this postseason. Kyle Tucker bats fifth, and Chaz McCormick. Mauricio Dubon in center field with Jeremy Pena, last year's World Series MVP, and Martin Maldonado. Well, the Rangers got Jordan Montgomery at the deadline from St. Louis, and timing is everything. They got a guy who seems like he's on a mission. Yeah, release point mechanics seem on point. He's going to try to stay out of the middle of the strike zone. This is a team that swings a lot, but doesn't miss it, swing and miss a lot. They do not strike out, and this is going to be the breakdown he's going to use to try to get the lanes east to west, where Verlander's going north to south. Jose Altuve with a home run on the first pitch of the division series. Ready to lead off the championship series. Breaking ball, strike one. He won't repeat too many pitches, although to Altuve later in the game, he'll throw him a lot of breaking balls, try to get him off that sinker, because Altuve can swing in a left-hander's batter's box and reach it and get a hit. Well, and there's so on from Montgomery. He shows blind. So he let off game one with a home run. He let off game two with a bunt single. Jose Altuve, after a horrible postseason last year, great year this year when he was healthy. 
Yeah, much better start to this postseason than last one. 1-1, one, one, El Tuve hits one in the air, left center field. To the edge of the track goes Carter, who just got under it for the first out. Carter's part of this Texas defense with Leo Tiveras in center field and Adolis Garcia, the best arm of the outfielders in right. Young and Seeger on the left side. Simeon and Lowe on the right. Jonah Heim, the all-star behind the plate. So again, if, if Montgomery can get swing and misses, which is going to be tough because he's a contact pitcher, it's going to bode well for him. The guy at the plate doesn't swing and miss at any left-handed fastball for the most part, and he gets the pitch he likes to hit. They're going to look to jam him early. And that's where he's got to live on that line. It's like field goal post. If he can stay on each side of the field goal post, he's going to be fine because ultimately they want to get Bregman out of way because he loves the ball middle third. You see him choking up on that bat. It's kind of a snapshot of what he's going to do. So hard to strike this guy out. Hooks one to the left field corner. Carter on the move. Looking grab. Evan Carter, who's made his impact in the batter's box since he came up a month ago, makes a nice defensive play right there. He sure did. This is one of the toughest left fields to play because of that fence. It's obviously a miniature. Uh, Green Monster, and if you can hook the ball in this field, you're going to get rewarded a lot. And you got to know that it is the shortest distance other than in Boston. You feel like you're you're almost in the infield sometimes, but you got to protect against the crazy bounces off that wall. All right, Johnny, here is the most terrifying man in October. How in the world are you pitching to this guy? Just like this. Two outs, nobody on. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he's got a bunch of bases open, but he's got a breaking ball him, try to get him to expand away. And he I don't know if he can get up and in enough on him, but that's where you've got to pitch Alvarez. He's got only one area right now of weakness. So the target is it's a fastball fouled off. Four home runs in the division series against four different pitch types. That is where you want to get the ball, okay? And you want to get it there and keep it away from there because that is going to be deadly. Well, perfect pitch. That's exactly what you've got to do. And with two strikes, I'll show you where I think he's going to go with two strikes, but that's the key. You've got to get the two strikes. That last pitch was perfect. He needs to get that call, even though it's a little bit up. That lane is where he's trying to get the fastball established. 1-1. One, one. Nice. Yeah. One and two inside corner with a curve. Now what you want to do right now is you want to get this pitch right here breaking that way off the plate and if you can do that with your breaking ball is your only chance to get a swing and miss just do not miss with it the one two Alvarez pulls it foul Fast he's ball. so quick and he's got every quadrant covered that's why they have to get in to get him out of way you can't live in one spot he's hit four home runs on four different pitches in the postseason you see that and you go huh, a lot of respect yeah well, what do I do Montgomery's ahead of him one and two. Comes home. Alvarez swings and misses. Got him with a curve. There's the breaking ball. Now he missed location, but his speed was his spin was great. He's looking for a fastball up. If it's down, he takes it. If it's up, he lets it go first pitch. That is Adolis Garcia. He got a fastball, chopped it to short. One pitch. One. That's what you got to get in the playoffs. And you know guys are going to make contact early. You've got to get one pitch outs. Those are huge, and they go a long way to pitching longer in the game, of course. Well, Delson Verlander shut these Rangers down back in early September as part of a three-game rout. The day after that sweep, the Rangers called up 21 year old Evan Carter. Yeah, and he injected life into this lineup and has continued into the postseason, hitting above 400 this October. Well, takes outside for ball one. You know what's amazing, and Verlander, we could spend all game talking about his accomplishments, but this year, first pitch, batting average against 203. That's unheard of when you're talking about a league that loves to hit on the first pitch. 
2 0. Squeaks under Abreu into right field. Carter makes the turn on his way to second, and he will get there. Hustling his way in with a double. I'm telling you, he did a little bit of a deke. He kind of went around the base anticipating and then turned it on when he saw Tucker look at him. The ball gets deflected, slows it down, goes to right field. But when he's running, watch him come around the back. Right. He knows it's a hit. He's got to hit, see him slow down a little bit right there, and then take off. And that's all it took for Tucker to be just a fraction late to second. That's an element that he's added to this team. In addition to his on-base ability, he is their fastest guy and aggressive and crafty right there. So the Rangers have their first man in scoring position for their catcher, Jonah Hyde, who takes ball one from Verlander. You know who liked those four days off? This guy. That guy. Uh -huh. <laughs> Catching the last hundred games in a row, it seems like, for Texas. And he enjoyed, I'm sure, the time off. 28-year-old, all-star catcher, bangs the ball to right center field. It's down in front of Dubon, who's got a good arm, but his throw won't have a chance to get Carter. Texas won. Houston nothing. And a base hit from Jonah Heim. A well-rested Heim makes it one nothing. He's got a little hitting streak going in his postseason career. I believe that's six now. And I think for the Texas Rangers, this is what we've seen in the postseason. They can get on the board quick, and they make you pay if you make mistakes. Not an awful pitch, but caught too much of the plate. This is a fast-paced, like, NBA run-type offense that the Rangers have. And now it's Nathaniel Lowe lifting the ball to center field. Dubon's back on it with room. Everybody we talked to about the Rangers, you know, from Baltimore to Tampa Bay before that, and now Houston, what's the key to slowing them down? It's like, yeah, you got to avoid that run. You got to, you know, like you're talking about the basketball runs, you got to get a timeout in there before it happens because it can happen so fast. And the reason it does, Joe, is the bottom of their lineup that's coming up right now is really, really good. Maybe the best in baseball. And that's the difference between these two teams. Eight and nine, big time advantage, Texas, and what they can do and turn the lineup over. Yeah, this is really where you feel that length. You got an all-star rookie in Josh Young hitting eighth, and here's what they've done this postseason. 382 with 11 runs score. I mean, it's just been amazing all year to watch them, but they have disappeared at times, and they're hoping the playoffs they don't. That's in the left center field off of the end of the bat, but Young's able to dunk it in there. Third hit of the inning for the Rangers. You know, it's amazing, new baseball rules with the pitch clock if things could get sped up. They're not going to get sped up on Verlander, per se, but you only have so much time to slow the game down. you got to use managerial me uh, meetings at the mound or pitching coaches, and that's right up Texas's alley. One of your tools during the postseason was to just step off, yep. take a breath right, look around. Yep. Can't do that now. Not, well, as, not in the time frame you got. got to do it fast. <laughs> step off, look back. Two on, two out for the nine-hitter, Tavares. Ooh, almost got hit. And it was just in the dirt. Ball one. Former top prospect, Tavares, who started to find his footing this year. Above 300 in September, and as we showed, he's contributed this postseason as well out of the nine spot. Curveball that pretty much throws a lot for strikes in this inning now with traffic on. Good takes by Tavares to get the working ahead in the count. Another. I think that's the thing that as you watch the Rangers becomes extra impressive. You know they score a bunch of runs. You know they've got guys that can hit it hard, but the patience and the ability to grind down a pitcher has been on display throughout this postseason. Well, four. A four pitch Inside. walk to load the bases ahead of the top of the order. And it again, John, is the bottom of the lineup teeing things up. Yeah, this is what uh, makes uh, the Rangers so scary of an offensive team. And 
Look, they, most of the people who didn't get a chance to see the last series, we talked about how many times in a game they can score three or more in an inning. It's unbelievable. You know, we were talking about how hard a time they had down the stretch, but they got hot at the right time and have blitzed their way through the postseason into the saloon and just kicking dudes out. Corey Seager's been a big part of that, hitting 429, walking his way to an historic division series. to Nathan Avaldi, two starts, two wins, clinched the wild card round, clinched the division series. And then the bullpen, which we'll touch on as this game goes on, has been much better so far in the postseason. And it was in the regular year. Simeon with the bases loaded takes the fifth straight Verlander miss. Yeah, and he went five straight breaking balls. That one was the slider, and he's gone to the windup, which is his comfort zone, but it also gives the runners bigger advantage to score on a hit, especially from second and maybe even a double with the runner at first. Big spot early in the game here. It is a slider low. It's 2-0. Oh. Well, now Verlander has to trust his fastball if he's going to throw it 2 0 -oh and make it away because he doesn't have much room being with a 2 0 -oh count and bases loaded. Nowhere to put Simeon. Bases loaded, two out. Fouls it back. And he went with a tighter slider that stays in the zone. And Simeon, of course, really took off this year for the Rangers and it set the tone for this lineup. Led the league in hits, led the league in runs scored. In his second season with the Rangers. On this 2 1 pitch, he launches one straight up. Left side of the infield. Bregman in foul ground will watch this thing. It was hit. Did it hit the roof? Yeah, that's a rare thing if it did. And if it does, it is fouled immediately, assuming that it hit it in foul ground. Wow, he just missed that fastball. And when you just miss it, that's what happens. It goes straight up, and rarely <laughs> you see it hit the roof. And we can't see it because we got an overhang here. So that fastball was in that sweet zone and just misses it. From 2 and 0 to 2 and 2. Verlander fires. This has been where Verlander's been extra good. Dusty Baker said before the game today he's been you know, good at times, he's been bad at other times, but he always seemingly finds a way to get out of these jams. Another 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball foul. Well, this is his challenge. He's gotten back in the count after being down 2-0, but rarely does Simeon miss on any pitch in the strike zone. Swing and miss rarely, which is a great attribute for a leadoff hitter, and with runners in scoring position, he's been outstanding this year. You want the big swinger up there that's gonna that you can get some swing and miss in the zone. Base is loaded second inning, run in the bank. Rangers looking for a crooked number in the second. Not going to get it. Little pop shadow center. El Tube's out. And the Rangers get one but leave the bases loaded. They start the scoring, though. Evan Carter with a hustle double to set things up for Jonah Heim. Middle two, one nothing Texas. Well, better late than never for Houston's big free agent signing this offseason. Jose Abreu has gotten it going really the last two months and coming off a huge division series. Yeah. And early on it was it was it was painful for him. He hadn't had any power. He was struggling and remember just getting out of sync mechanically and boy when he's doing this batting behind Alvarez. <laughs> Yeah, him getting going, it really does feel more like just Abreu getting hot. It, it's got this whole lineup humming, feeling like it's capable of keeping up with scoring in Texas. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, this is uh, one of the most prolific hitters, of course, mainly with the Chicago White Sox, and that's mainly where he had success against Montgomery. 
His back was bothering him all year. He finally relented, went on the injured list in August, took care of that, and you see the difference since coming back. Led the league in runs batted in the final month, and then three home runs, seven knocked in the last two games of the division series. A guy who somewhat quietly, because he was playing on some not very good teams a lot of his career in Chicago, has been one of the most productive hitters in baseball the last decade. Only Altuve's got more hits. Nobody's driven in more runs. Not a one-two from Jordan Montgomery. Abreu takes out shot. There's the pitch. That pitch not thrown a ton. That changeup can be huge against the Astros hitters. With the Brayu, he's super aggressive with two strikes out of the zone, and that's where they tried to go the last two pitches. Coming inside with a 2 2, and the fastball's fouled back. Customize your home feed with your favorite postseason team. Watch daily recaps, get personalized stats, highlights, and breaking news every day, all on the MLB app. 30 year old Jordan Montgomery. Out of Sumter, South Carolina. Home with another 2-2. Two -two. It's a fastball taken high. Well, what he does with his fastballs is throw the two-seamer that gives the illusion of movement, which it has, and then that four-seamer just actually has more pop. That's what he tried to do inside there. I wonder if he'll go 3-2 change up here to the leadoff batter. He does. Abreu lines it to left field, and he's got a base hit. First run of the game for the Astros, Jose Abreu. Well, left it up at a 3-2 scenario that uh, allows Abreu to keep his hands back, even though he's out front, his hands back, and he flips it to left field. That's how strong he is. When you keep your hands back, you still can do damage, even if you hit it off the end of the bat. And roll over. Leadoff man aboard, Kyle Tucker coming up in this 1 0 second inning. Grounds the first one that he sees to second. Simeon gets there, low throw that's picked by Seeger. So they get the lead runner, one gone. That's the one thing we're also going to see that these teams can play some defense. And. To be able to have a Montgomery on the mound, you have to have plays like this made. He's going to pitch more to contact. And this was a base hit that he robbed. And he had time. He wasn't trying to turn two. See how the ball just came out of his hand and popped out, and he had a changeup grip. But Seeger played first base and second. Yeah, especially for Texas. Defense has been a big part of their story this year. Chaz McCormick stands in, fouls off first pitch breaking ball. Career year for McCormick. Yeah, and he has. Saved his best for these Texas Rangers. Ten games, he's knocked in 15 runs. He likes facing left-handers to say that. Say that goes the other way, and he'll pull the ball in if he gets it. Oh, and two on McCormick. The defense for the Rangers, those 57 errors, the fewest that they've committed in franchise history. And not just making the sound plays, but big plays and big moments throughout this postseason. Josh Young had a double play in game one of the division series that turned that game and perhaps that series very early. McCormick gets to this inside pitch, flies it to center field for Tavares. We know home runs are what's winning a lot of baseball games in the postseason. Well documented, we've got the stats on that. But I'll tell you another thing that's going to be a difference in this series is starters going six innings. And we, we've showed last series what the importance of a starter when he goes six and the other starter doesn't. It's a pretty phenomenal uh, winning percentage. And both of these clubs have been able to do that with the Astros, of course, leading baseball in their starters' average innings. Two gone, Dubon. And especially important, John, it feels like for the Rangers to protect that bullpen. Yes. The bullpen has been good this postseason, but it's been because they've scored enough where it hadn't mattered in the pitching. The starters have gotten deep to not expose. And no doubt. And that number 30 and 8, and that a couple of those well, when both starters went, so they're going to be a loss in there. When only one goes, it's down to two losses a team has when one starter goes six and the other doesn't. So for the last two postseasons, here's Dubon shooting a fly ball the other way that backs up Garcia, and that'll do it 
for the second inning. The Rangers won, the Astros nothing. And back after a word from your local Fox station. For this postseason, get the best 5G coverage in the game with T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Corey Seager leads off for the Rangers. They lead 1-0. Singled on a first pitch curve his first time, and he fouls off a well-placed fastball first pitch here. Yes, Corey Seager may he walked a ton against Baltimore. But you can tell what he wants to do early in the count. He wants to slug. That's part of why it was so surprising to see him walk as many times as he did. So aggressive. Oh. Two pitches, two swings, and a little pop here. Left side, long run. Bregman is there for the first out. And I would think any time you can get a guy like Seeger like that, you are exhaling. Well, you heard that. Oh, yeah. from Seeger because he missed his pitch. This was. A slider right there, and Seeger knows it. I mean, this pitch was right there. Oh. Garver with one away. First pitch curve, top of the zone for a strike, and we go down to Kenny. Justin Verlander so far, guys. 17 swings against, eight fouls, no misses. Hmm. Very breaking ball heavy so far and he's throwing breaking balls more and more throughout his career leaned on it in his division series start. It's a good breaking ball hitting team though. It is this matchup right here though Gar Garber doesn't like sliders and that's why the, the big mismatch has been he hasn't gotten a hit and seven strikeouts coming into his matchup so. Verlander sticking with it as far as he can and pick his spots for fastballs against him. Well. He can slow you down with a big breaking ball, the 12 to 6. That's basically he's going to go top to bottom off his fastball, and then he can throw that tight slider that stays in the strike zone and gets the corner. Like that. Well done. He's the one in center field for Mauricio Dubon. Two up and two down in his third inning, and our player profile sponsored by Liberty Mutual. Justin Verlander, who debuted in 2005 and is now in his 18th season. 13 years in Detroit. Look at him back in 2011 when he won the pitching triple crown. 257. He's within range with the way he's going of threatening 300. He, of course, has three no hitters in his career. His career that is headed straight to Cooperstown. And looking for a third World Series this year. Adolis Garcia slaps the first one down the line towards the corner and just foul. Well, you can't wait around getting ready for these guys no. when they step in. Especially the fastball down. That's the that's the pitch that the, the Rangers are going to have success against Verlander. It's got to be on that pitch because when he throws 60 percent fastballs up. And that pitch is very difficult to get on top of with the angle of which he releases the ball. He releases the ball so high that that pitch right there catching a little bit too much of the plate was the pitch that Garcia would like to have back. Another high one and foul back. I mean you tip your hat if you can get to that at the angle because now he has he can go in so many directions he can drop drop a curveball off of that or he can try to elevate even more with two strikes to get his eyes up on the pitch that he just got done fouling off. Verlander is 0 2. Good take. Ball one. See the difference there with the slider he was trying to paint and get a called strike three but that slider you can track a little bit more after seeing a high fastball than the curveball your eyes go up and you almost kind of bail on the breaking ball. Uh, there's one too much back to the slider and it misses badly. Justin Verlander trying to get to within one win of Andy Pettit's postseason record Verlander's got 17. After beating the Twins, game one of the division series. 2 2. Another high pop up. The Brayu to call and the catch to finish off the first 1 2 3 inning for Verlander.
Want to talk postseason ball with a friend? Just tell Siri. FaceTime Parker. Jeremy Pena leads off the bottom of the third for the Astros. Down one nothing. Game one of this American League Championship Series. And he takes ball one from Montgomery. That's a big thing. Didn't swing. Yeah. <laughs> he loves the swing. <laughs> And he has done so to great effect on this stage before the LCS and World Series MVP as a rookie last year. Postseason Pena, different guy. One and one. Well, I'm a, can I blow your mind for a second? Oh yeah, blow my mind. All right, that's the 37th swing in the game. Only one swing and miss. That tells you how good these offenses are, and the swing and miss came from Montgomery. Mm. Five down the line, and you know, so this is seven consecutive championship series appearances for the Astros. The one thread through that whole thing is their ability to avoid swing and miss, their ability to avoid strikeouts. Seven straight years, they've been in the top three in that category. It's amazing. I mean, a lot of it is the is the effort of, of the personnel that they have and the young guys that come up they tell them hey we strike we don't strike out here so you got to put the ball in play and it's why they've had so much success. One two pitch and then you look at the other side and talk all about the Rangers offense how impressive they are and you, you start to compare and it's like huh they're kind of doing what has made Houston so good for so long. Yeah absolutely. Both teams have this slug early, attack early, and patient late. And they don't expand the zone with two strikes. Montgomery to Pena with a 2 2 pitch. Chopper, Seeger, one short step to another. So there's seven consecutive trips to the championship series for the Astros. Only the Braves, your Braves teams, had a longer streak of making LCS appearances. Yeah, and in search of their third consecutive pennant in a fifth in seven years. But a much different path this year. This Astros team has been tested like never before during this near decade of dominance. And there were six and a half games back in late June. They didn't even get into first place until August 29th. It was Texas that was in first place pretty much all year. Going into the last weekend there were 11 possibilities for them to make the playoffs nine of which were good nine possibilities mathematically for them only one possibility for them to win the division and it <laughs> happened and of course Texas wasn't happy about that flying all the way to Seattle but they've since turned that around and that energy is turned into like we're going to show you that we're ticked off and they've showed it by winning five straight games. Yeah, that final weekend, the Rangers dropped three of four to blow a division they'd led all year. Astros won four in a row to win the division yet again. Martin Maldonado, who has homered twice against Montgomery, takes good, ball good, in the dirt one and one. With a different path to the same destination for these Astros, and it's the same roadblock for the rest of the American League. Dusty Baker's experience bunch. It shows you a lot when the when the Royals came in here and swept them there was this oh my goodness could it be that they missed the playoffs. And now they have home field throughout the playoffs it's amazing on how it worked out but Dusty and his crew I mean both managers my goodness they know how to navigate this time of the year and uh, it shows up. One two pitch in the dirt two and two. The Astros catcher Maldonado on a two two. Takes in the dirt he's worked it full. Dusty Baker's field general doesn't hit much elite when it comes to guiding that staff.
the payoff. Ball. Ball four. Both nine hitters have taken a walk. Back to the top. Here comes El Tuve. Well, this is. He ain't. He's not taking the first pitch. And that's not his approach when he walks up there. And the good and the bad of how good this guy is, sometimes he can roll over in the double play. Well, he did take the first pitch. The, the Astros as a team, third most double plays, speaks a little bit to their aggressiveness and swinging to make contact. But they do everything else about as well as anybody. Time on the board in this third inning as the layout comes home. There's ball one. Now Jose Altuve missed 70 games this year, and that went a long way. Not that it needed to be in reinforced, but reinforcing his importance because the Astros just kind of felt lost. They felt disjointed all year as they tried to get healthy. Missing their heart and soul. The guy that's been there this whole time, face of this most dominant era. Fouls it off himself one and two. Well he's such a unique player gives hope to so many people that think baseball is about brute and strength and all that. I mean here's this guy at his size he can generate such incredible bat speed he hit for power he hit for average and, and certainly the only thing that maybe he does a little bit more is he expands the zone a little much when he make con when he makes contact he hit, he's hitting a lot of pitches outside the strike zone. Big man, little man, both studs. Montgomery brings him a one two, and Altuve pops it up. Short right center field. Simeon says that he's got it, and he does. This is a guy here, Jordan Montgomery, that the Yankees traded to the Cardinals last year, didn't really foresee him as part of their postseason rotation. Back to the Cardinals on a one year deal and it's like where did this guy come from but you've liked him for a long time. Oh, I, I, absolutely his makeup and his ability to pitch that's the thing he knows how to pitch. Does to Bregman. You know we talk about how to get it done different ways he has a great arm swing and what I mean about arm swing in a pitcher it's fluid there's no hitch it comes out it's a good angle you talked about the height at which Verlander throws he throws at a, at a higher level and release point and he's just sneaky quick and lives on the edges of the strike zone. Oh. It's a little bit of deception with that delivery and then he's so unpredictable too, John. I mean he's got five pitches and you never really know which one he's going to lean on. Right. He hides the ball but the arm swing see they're looking for his hand to come out and it comes out right there higher than they anticipate and the ball has more life than they are used to seeing because it's not lighting up the radar gun. There yeah. you go. And he stays stubborn. He knows how to release. The, like he's condensed everything to pitch out of the stretch, right? Doesn't matter if there's anybody on. He's going to pitch out of the stretch. But there's that two seamer that he starts in and runs back. And then he can throw the four seamer that stays up. And the hitter thinks it's going to run back. And it gets off the sweet spot of the bat. Two and two. And his changeup, I'm telling you, I know it's not the highest use pitch, pitch, but that is going to be so for an, a team that loves to slug in the Astros. See how up front he was with that, and now if he wants off that changeup, he can force seam it and try and sneak attack that fastball against Bregman, or go away and extend the at bat away, getting him to reach. Here's his 2 2. Ball inside. Inside with the fastball. And he went four seam, and he, he would have locked him up if it were on that line, of course, just inside. And one of the best at recognizing the strike zone, Bregman, got the call. Head start for Maldonado as the 3 2 comes home. Bregman hits one to left down the line. It's a fair ball that's cut off by Carter. Maldonado stops at second on a two out single from Alex Bregman. First and second with two gone and guess who's coming up. Well Alvarez has done it all postseason his whole career he's going to hit a fastball a change up a slider a cutter. He's hitting everything you throw at him and it's the most frustrating thing right there you think you got him up he gets the barrel to it.
four seam change up cutter slaughter. And the first time they got him out, I thought they did a great job establishing inside with the fastball. OK, they think I'm not afraid of him. That could have been the pitch. They got called for a strike breaking ball and then they get him on a two strike breaking ball. Maybe not where it was intended, but the break was so good because he was inside conscious. Hitters now will remember what you were doing to him. And now it's up to the pitcher to decide, OK, I can go to another area unless you've got a hitter that just cannot make adjustments. So based on how that first at bat went, where are you going this time? I would be more apt to throw. It's a great call and I'm sure that's what they're meeting about. I would I would test him away with a breaking ball first pitch because you know he th he's thinking middle in. I'm going to get the barrel to bat to it and crush. This is the best part about the cat and mouse game that still exists in baseball. Your Don Alvarez oh, takes inside. Oh, very good. They went fastball with that sink in. Again, you've got to stay out of this zone over the plate. You've got to bury it inside and above those two target lines because in the zone, he is unreal. 1 0. -oh. Good pitch. Pitches in. He hits 234. Elevated fastballs if you get it up enough he hits 200 well that one he got away with because he cut his two sinker and it actually worked for a good pitch away but that was intended in two on two out here's the one one for Montgomery Alvarez fouls it off great pitch that's exactly what we talked about in the first at bat to get him up is tying him up but again all series you can't live in there because he will make the adjustment. But what you have the luxury to do now is again if you want to breaking ball away because they've established so much in. Struck him out on a curve his first time on this one two pitch here. Montgomery goes with a high fastball two and two. I still like his breaking ball away after seeing everything up there. Maldonado's at second. Bregman's at first. The monster, Jordan Alvarez, at the plate. A 2 2. Ball inside. Inside, and it's 3 and 2 as he just missed with a change. How about a lefty lefty change, too? Yeah, that was actually a gutsy pitch right there. That just tells you he's connected to his pitching because you pull that at all as a changeup. Not good. The payoff. Fouled off. Twenty six years old. Big impact in all his postseasons. Trying to get the Astros on the board in game one. There's the breaker down in the way you were looking for. And Jordan Montgomery has two Ks in this game, both of them against Jordan Alvarez. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by T Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. Baseball legend Dusty Baker. Finally got that ring last season. And coming back for another. His fourth year, his fourth LCS trip. Evan Carter takes first pitch curve from Justin Verlander in a 1 0 game one. Brought credibility, stability back to the Astros. Did Dusty Baker, of course, took over the job in the wake of the scandal. Guy has been in baseball for more than a half a century. Back to back curves. Nice pick by Altuve for the first out of the fourth. Tom Verducci's got Dusty Baker. Oh, thanks, Joe. And Dusty Baker, Justin Verlander has said with extra rest, sometimes it takes a while to find the command. Do you see it improving in these last couple of innings? Oh, yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, he's throwing the ball well. And, uh, you know, Carter's hit the ball hard off of him. You know, like that, that's one guy we don't know too much about. And, uh, 
he just made a good play. Altuve did right then, but I tell you, you let Verlander get into uh, the middle innings here, he's extremely tough. On the other side, Jordan Montgomery, you knew he mixes up pitches, but he's gotten six of his nine outs on the fastball. What adjustments do you want to see from your hitter second time through? Well, you know, we haven't seen him that much, and uh, he's throwing harder than I than I recall. I mean, I looked on the board up there, he's 93, you know, 94. Uh, he's hanging that curveball, so hopefully he'll hang that to one of our big boys and we'll hit him out of here. Thanks so much, Dusty. All right, thank you. Jonah Himes up there. One gone in the fourth. Taken inside, one ball, one strike. One of the many subplots in this championship series is this matchup of two future Hall of Fame managers, and Dusty Baker and Bruce Bochy. Both in their 26th year. And both more than 2,000 wins. Ball. Two and one. Bochy's won four pennants, Baker's won three. More than 100 postseason wins between the two guys combined. Four World Series rings after Dusty got his last year. And just no numbers that can describe the respect those guys have across the game. Bregman going to give this one a look. Dead sprint into foul ground to get there. Two legends in this era governed by numbers. Two managers that just as often rely on what their gut tells them, informed by the numbers, but informed by about a half a century each in this game. Yeah, no doubt. And I think what Dusty Baker cannot get understated, what he's done and how he deals with no matter what the scenario is, cool as it comes. And of course, Bruce Bochy, all he does is win. And that's what they were hoping when they brought him over to Texas. Got him, got him out from coaching his grandkids. Nathaniel Lowe with two goals. Long takes inside ball one. Yeah, he's coaching his grandkids and he was uh, managing Team France in the WBC, saying, I hope that nobody was watching because we weren't very good. <laughs> I don't know that it mattered how good you were, Boach. Bregman again. An instant replay. Does he have room again? Not this time. Now those two guys first faced off for the first time 45 years ago. September 7, 1978. Dusty Baker was playing for the Dodgers. They were at the Astrodome, and Houston's rookie catcher was Bruce Bochy. And Dusty hit a home run and a 3 2 win for the Dodgers. They've managed against each other in more than a full season worth of games. It's pretty amazing. I think 209 times. One and two on low. And the uh, first swing and miss for Verlander. Yeah, well, Dusty knows his pitcher gets in a rhythm, especially late. It's over. People don't understand at home. I, they, they see, you know, certain things in there. Like, why did hitters swing at that pitch? Because it comes out of his hand looking really good and then stays and holds plane up. And it's so hard to get on top of that pitch for any hitter, whether right handed or left handed. Fly to left center field. No big deal for Chaz McCormick. And that is seven straight retired by Justin Verlander in this Texas matchup. In this legendary skipper matchup. Dusty Baker, Bruce Bochy. The 2023 American League Championship Series on Fox is presented by Lone Depot, and Game One is one nothing Texas. Jose Abreu starts the bottom of the fourth against Jordan Montgomery. And take strike one. Abreu singled his first time, one of just three base runners against Montgomery through three plus. It's a good Astros lineup, clicking at the right time. Ten home runs in the division series. You knew all that. You watched all that. But you said, I still like Jordan Montgomery tonight. Yeah, he's funky and, and does enough to get a really good offensive team that we talked about makes contact just a little bit off their game. Now, we'll see how many times he gets to go through the lineup to do that. One and two. And one thing about the Texas Rangers that'll be a a theme moving forward if they are to continue winning baseball they haven't played many close games especially in the postseason.
And you think the Houston Astros know been there done that they can win all those close games which they have. We'll see how this series if it stays close how the bullpen for the Rangers reacts. One two pitch one gone in the fourth as he gets him with a high fastball. We'll talk about that four seam fastball. It's a little bit better than they give it credit for. There's the four seam grip. It rides up, and hitters have a hard time, especially with two strikes, thinking, I got this. I'll get on top of it. Looks juicy, right? Sure does. Buy ya. Another aggressive hitter stepping into the plate, and Kyle Tucker. And another one that is historically good left hander against left hander. Pinpoint, yeah. strike one. Yeah I'd say the Houston Astros like facing left handed pitchers a lot of the stats scream left handed pitches is their uh, forte well, when you got a bunch of righties in the lineup and then your two key lefties are two of the best ever at hitting left handers there are just no oh. breaks here yeah, Montgomery could squeeze a little bit there one and one and there you have it that is about as good as it gets right there for power on base plus slugging there OPS number one. There are only two left handed hitters ever with a better on base plus slugging than Kyle Tucker against left handed pitching. Jordan Alvarez his teammate and Barry Bonds. Oh man. You do have to be careful with the left handed breaking ball against Tucker a lot of home runs last two years on breaking balls off of left handers great with two strikes as well. Got a sinker here and popped it into center field for Tavares and out number two. Well, the postseason continues tomorrow with game two of this series. The Rangers and the Astros moves up 3.30 Eastern on Fox and FS1. And then in prime time, the National League Championship Series gets started. Game one, Diamondbacks, surprise team taking on the Phillies. And boy, you got to have your stars clicking in the postseason and all four teams that are still going to have. Phillies trying to make it back-to-back -back trips to the World Series. Diamondbacks. Championship series for the first time in almost two decades. It'll be Zach Gallen in game one tomorrow against Zach Wheeler. Chaz McCormick fly to center his first time. Shoots one to right center field. Tavares stumbled a little bit coming out of the box and probably wasn't going to have a shot anyways. And a two out base hit for McCormick. Yeah, he hit that off the end of the bat. And Center field here is a lot of space. That's where you want if you're a pitcher. You want the ball in center field, especially if it's in the air. Because down the lines, you can do some damage. And there's that unique style where he's set up closed and can go that way with the best of them. Keep seeing it alive for Mauricio Dubon. Hit it hard his first time, but caught and left. Hits it hard again. This one won't be caught. Back to back two out hits for the Astros. Yeah, and Jeremy Pena gets an opportunity here. Good in the bat with these two back to back, meaning they can get their hits, which they've proven, but they'll swing a lot early too, and you can get those quick outs. So when you have two guys back to back and you make your pitches, the innings are quicker and you save those bullets. So right here is still going to be the same thing. Very aggressive. And I wouldn't think he's not ready to swing on the first pitch here. Two on two out. Astros looking to get on the board. There's ball one. Pena has been a different guy in his young career once the calendar flip stocks over. Some guys are just are just different are just made for it. A 259 hitter during the regular season. 329 in the postseason. to station early stop sign given by Gary Pettis that ball got on Carter in a hurry and the bases are loaded for the Astros that's the difference what I was talking about in left field the left fielder is going to play so shallow because balls that are hit up over their head is definitely going to hit the wall so a big break for the Rangers three hits with two outs and you can see Carter he's got a really good arm and you see where he's played and this ball just gets them too quick. 
easy stop sign at third base. We well, were talking earlier about one of the differences in this very evenly matched series is the bottom of the order. Well, you got three straight hits here from McCormick, Dubon, and Pena, but you now have statistically one of the worst hitters in baseball coming up in a massive spot in Martin Maldonado. Yeah, he's the wild card because he's almost up there just trying to hit homers, and he's done that twice off of Montgomery, so you know he's seeing it well off of him. Number on his jersey, number of home runs that he's hit total this year. And four of those 15 have come against the Rangers. First big chance for the Astros. Bases loaded down a run in the fourth. Maldonado follows it back. And for whatever reason, fastballs, he's had virtually no success against left handed pitchers. Hitting under 120. There's her talking about though against Montgomery three for four two home runs and a double and walked his first time today. The 1 left it up there. These are the situations when you're in up on the road you got to stay within yourself because the emotion of the crowd and everything you know. <laughs> when the crowd's going like this, you're in trouble, in theory, because runners are on the base. Andrew Heaney starts to warm as the 1-1 comes home, and Maldonado fouls it off. He's a strike away from getting out of it. Justin Verlander is able to get out of the bases loaded situation in the second. Montgomery finds himself in the same situation here in the fourth. And it would be I mean you don't want Maldonado to get extended but you almost if the bases weren't loaded I don't know if this will change his opinion a curveball down and in at his back foot to swing over the top I talked about what he wasn't doing against fastballs and the first three have been fastballs. The one two pitch sticks with a fastball and strikes him out. Jordan Montgomery gets out of the bases loaded jam keeping the Rangers in front. Back after a word from your local Fox station. Justin Verlander has retired seven straight. The eight hitter Josh Young leads off and lifts the first one foul. It's a little bit, John, like his first start of the postseason where it took him a little, by, a little while to settle in, but then once he does, look out. Yeah, he can establish his fastball now at the top tier of the strike zone and doing well. Both pitchers had their moment. Bases loaded, two outs. Both pitchers got out of it after trailing one nothing for Verlander. Game one of the ALCS, and Justin Verlander is pitching for the Astros. I think he's done pretty well in game ones. He has. Got like a streak going. Uh huh. Six in a row? Yep. Just uh, kind of a scenic route that he took to get to this one. Going to New York, of course. And, you know, this incredible run for the Astros, his seven year run doesn't begin without them trading for him in 2017. And it probably doesn't continue without them trading for him again. Eight and two of the three ERA since they acquired him while the rest of the rotation was just struggling to find it. The margin was razor thin for them to get into the postseason. Well the other thing he's been able to do is is add that influence back with the club with a framber with the rest of the staff getting them locked in for this time of the year and all that they're trying to do and defend. Signed that huge two year deal with the Mets, who at that point were one of the big World Series favorites. 16 starts there. Well, then once it became clear they weren't going to contend, and of course, Scherzer gets traded to the Rangers. Verlander, the ability to have a little bit of say where he ends up with the full no trade clause, his mind immediately went here to Houston, where he, of course, had all that comfort, familiarity. And the D 
deal happens. The Astros probably aren't here if it doesn't. That's for sure. Well, this young man, no pun intended here, likes the ball middle to down, closer inside. He doesn't like it away, and that's where Verlander's been trying to get his outs against Young away. Ball. Oh. Took it. And that was a great pitch that he took. Expanding the zone is the key in the postseason. See which hitters are aggressive, which ones get out of their mechanics. The pitcher with stuff is going to expose everybody in the postseason, but a good take. Young leads off the inning and Hurry. takes strike three as Stu Showalter expands the zone a little bit there and gives Verlander his first K of the game. To see where this pitch is. It's a fastball out over the plate. And that one was outside, but got the call and he stayed disciplined to stay away on Young. One away for Tavares, who fouls off first pitch. I got to say, we've been doing this is our fourth game, and the umpires have been great. So good, yeah. Water usually a little bigger zone, a little more pitcher friendly zone. Certainly was on that full count pitch. No one two on Tavares. Two rare change up from him. Jordan Montgomery over there with his catcher Jonah Heim, his pitching coach Mike Maddox. Four scoreless innings. The one two pitch is hit hard, deep right field, and Leone Tavares takes Verlander deep. That time of year where names are made, and how about Leone Tavares out of the nine spot hitting a home run against Justin Verlander? Talked about the eight nine batters for the Rangers two hits now out of that slot nothing bigger than that home run on a breaking ball. He's having a hard time catching up to the fastball up watch it just click see how he dropped the barrel down and he knew that was a connected swing on a pitch usually if you showed all the home runs in Major League Baseball they're going to be in that area for the most part. Strike one on Simeon. And it's Tavares, 25 years old, a former top prospect who just could not seem to figure it out at the big league level. He's back and forth his first few years. 226 his first three seasons, and he was playing athletic defense, but just not hitting. 12 home runs those first three years. That homer there is his 15th this year. When you include the regular season and the postseason together. Two on Simeon. Look, both these teams know they can hit. And for whatever reason, there's going to be more consistency out of the Astros now that they're healthier. They were missing their two big stars for most of the year. Whereas the Rangers had this hot and cold, but when they're hot, they were extremely hot. And even their manager, when we talked to him, he was like, Look, I don't know why we disappear at times, but we do. And they disappeared at the wrong time at the end of the year. That cost them the division, and we talked about the travel and everything. But boy, timing is pretty good right now. Yeah, their best time, most well-timed hot streak they've had out of the many that they've had this year. Two and two on Simeon. This is a team who in August won eight in a row, and then lost eight in a row. And in September, lost four straight, then won six straight, twice. Before that two and four disastrous final week and now trying to start the postseason six and oh. 
2 2. Line to center field. On comes Dubon. Diving catch to finish off the top of the fifth. So for out number two in the top of the fifth. Mauricio Dubon, who Dusty Baker likes to play in center field because Justin Verlander typically has a lot of fly balls, and this guy can do this. Yeah, he timed it up perfectly. He almost could have gotten there a little more speed without diving, but just a controlled dive. And very nice play, and pitchers always like that. Former infielder taught himself how to play the outfield during the COVID shutdown in 2020. Just watched a bunch of video. Called a bunch of outfitters that he knew. Seeger takes strike one. Yep. One for two so far. On this so long, Seeger grounds it foul. 0 oh and 2. He strikes out Seeger. So he strikes out Seeger, but it's Leone Tavares of all people that takes him deep. Halfway home in game one, the Texas Rangers with a two to nothing lead over Verlander and the reigning champs. Altuve to lead off Astros to get their third look at Jordan Montgomery who's thrown four scoreless strike yeah. one on Altuve it's a huge inning uh, because he's going through this lineup here for the third time and he's been a, he's done a great job mixing and matching so he's really kept them off balance and the Astros of course you mentioned how much they score via the home run yeah, 80 percent of the runs in this postseason have come via the long ball that's cracked to the left field corner long run for Carter he's there. And he has covered a mile so far in this game out there. MLB celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month by recognizing the contributions made to our game by the Latino community, past and present. Follow at Las Mayores and at MLB and visit LasMayores.com for full coverage. At some point, Bregman picks on the first pitch. He's really, really disciplined. At some point, he shocks the pitcher. And he didn't get a chance to do that. You got to be weary of a guy who you know is really patient, doesn't expand the zone, doesn't swing and miss a lot. And those guys pick and choose their spots to try to rush the pitcher and, of course, slug early in the count. 16 postseason home runs for Bregman after he took Sonny Gray deep game three last week. The 1 0 from Montgomery is inside for ball two. 14 of those 16 postseason home runs for Bregman have come against an all star pitcher. He came up in 2016. Seven straight LCS trip for him. Two staples in this Astros lineup at the top and Altuve and Bregman. Two and one. And that's what he does well. He's disciplined 2 0. A lot of hitters in the game that come out of their shoes to hit that pitch. He is looking middle third of the plate, and that's it. He'll defend and protect away late, but he wants the ball middle third of the strike zone. It yeah, doesn't swing until he gets it there. On this two -up pitch, rolls one to short. Seeger with an easy backhand and two gone. Now Montgomery has won the first two battles with Alvarez, striking him out both times. And two of those three times now that he's facing him with nobody on base. A little bit of stress the second time. He got him to swing and miss on what was pound in, pound in, pound in, and then eventually he went to the breaking ball and struck him out. Ball. Breaker, ball one. 
I know we don't get a chance in baseball to talk about going through the lineup three times. But when you go through the lineup like this, you you make adjustments. Can't get them out the same way every single time. A great hitter will expose that. Mm. He didn't even blink. It was a strike. Pitcher knew it. He didn't blink. He said, I'm going to make a good pitch here 2 0. No big deal. That's the way you got to approach it. Hit. It's taken all the way. Early on in my career, especially in these situations, I was a little too emotional. I'd yeah. see a pitch and I'd stare extra long, you know. I'm like, that's a strike. And then I learned to just not flinch. If you don't flinch, the hitter doesn't see any weakness. Dane Dunning getting loose. Montgomery's at 77 pitches. The 78th is a hammer that gets a swing and a miss. What a great pitch off that fastball that he took. I was surprised he took a 2 0 fastball with no even an attempt to look at it and then swung at that breaking ball off of it. Montgomery strikes out Alvarez for the third time tonight. He's through five scoreless innings in game one. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Allstate. You're in good hands. As are the Texas Rangers with this guy, Bruce Bochy, after three years away, back to manage his 26th season and now trying to reach his fifth World Series with his third different team. Pretty amazing. There you go, guys. As guys talk about just looking down and seeing his calming presence there at the end of the dugout. Team with a lot of guys that have never played on this stage. A comfort having that guy in charge. Three, four, and five coming up here. Strike one on Mitch Garver. And he's going to see that steady diet of breaking balls because that has been now 0 for 9 against Verlander in his career. Oh, slider away. Verlander has a unique style. He's got the back of his foot on the rubber, and as he goes through his motion, he slide his foot and then hook his cleats on that area right there. I could never hook my cleats on there. I think our uh, my Hall of Fame buddy Pedro Martinez used to hook his cleats and as nasty as they could get. And Verlander, of course, pretty nasty and a surefire Hall of Famer, but you don't see too many guys start with the heel on the very front of the rubber. Strikes out Garver. What's his reason for trying to do that? Well, I think he just gets some leverage and downhill, and it gets him closer to going downhill with that release point to the hitter. And it just feels like he can gain that power and use his lower half. He's such a look, every pitcher's got to use their lower half, but he's so gifted in repeating his mechanics. That's why he's lasted this long. That's why he's going to win 300 games, in my opinion, even at the age he's in with the injuries he's overcome from. Ball on Garcia. It really is amazing. At 40 years old, there's maybe a tiny drop off in velocity, but like overall, the stuff is not that different. No, and that's the beauty of his. He's lived through two eras of baseball, if you think about it. He used to throw 99 yeah. miles an hour, but he didn't start out throwing 99 miles an hour. That's why I call him a 10 speed bike, because he could save and reserve for later in the game. He's survived both the era that he started in and then the max effort, max spin rate, all the things that we they're teaching pitchers today. And here you are, a model to look after and how you have a long career. Sky high pop up. Foul grounded first for Jose Abreu. He's got it. Two gone in the six, and we go down to Tom Verducci. Yeah, as John was talking about hooking the rubber, obviously Clayton Kershaw, Sandy Koufax, a couple of guys who known for that. But Justin, interestingly, has done that, but he's emphasized it a little more, and he found that key in the last week of the regular season. And I asked him if he found it in a bullpen session, and he said, no, I found it in my hotel room. <laughs> Just kind of going through his motion, it allows him to stay on his backside longer, emphasizing the placement of that foot in the back leg. Kevin Carter with two weights. Takes a strike. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he brought a portable mound into his, <laughs> in his hotel room. <laughs> but that, Justin is always evolving, always taking information, always trying to progress, and he wants to pitch as long as he can to finish his career as strong as he can. And 
all the way remembering his start in, in Detroit and, and just how dynamic he was. He's been able to repeat his mechanics, keep the same body type, and do what every pitcher wants to do pitch for a long time. In his 18th season, Carter hooks one in the air to right field. Tucker's there. So one, two, three, six for Justin Verlander. Two nothing game, middle six. Start Saturday strong with seventh ranked Penn State and third ranked Ohio State on big noon Saturday and then eighth ranked Texas takes on Houston before a primetime showdown Utah and USC finish off a great day on Fox. Two nothing game Jordan Montgomery five scoreless innings and Jordan Alvarez or Jose Abreu beg your pardon fouls off first pitch. Yeah Montgomery's doing what he's done since he's been called over here. Look the Texas Rangers we're going to look at the pitch usage and how he's done it. The Texas Rangers spent a lot of money because they were going to get to the postseason with arms loaded. That arms loaded is on the injury list and they've had to adjust on the fly and they've done a nice job the last couple of weeks. Yeah, starting yeah. pitching at least in the offseason that was going to be the thing right they got the ground they got Evaldi. Yeah, the ground goes down with the injury Evaldi was injured at one point then they get Montgomery and Scherzer at the deadline then some glue guys that have held it all together throughout the year. Well, they have pitched to a 2.20 ERA in this postseason. It's been outstanding and for the future for the Texas Rangers everybody comes back healthy they're going to be outstanding again and this might just be the start of the rivalry. I know the rivalry exists but you need two teams playing great for the rivalry to really kick off and this is the starting point I think for it. It really officially began when the Astros moved to the American League in 2013 and it's kind of like they've taken turns bullying each other. You had the Rangers going through one of their best stretches at that point while the Astros were suffering through one of the worst stretches right. ever and then it completely flips. 2017 the Astros begin this run where they've gone to seven straight championship series the Rangers fell into the rebuild not to be seen in October again until this year. Swing and a miss from Abreu and a strikeout from Montgomery. The Lone Star State finally fully aligned for this all Texas championship series has been a lot of one team knocking around the other even this year. Yeah. Houston went nine and three against Texas and back in early September had a series where they absolutely blew the doors off the rush them. I mean I can't believe in 13 games they've hit 30 home runs have the Astros against the Rangers. Yeah that three game sweep in Texas in early September they outscored them 39 to 10. And then stole the division from them the last weekend. Tucker goes up the middle and there's Gumby there's Montgomery who's made some tremendous defensive plays on top of the great pitching in this postseason. <laughs> you know the whole dugout is sitting there going look what he found. <laughs> he he makes the play his defender was right behind him in second base would have made this play see how there's position but as a pitcher you put your glove down and you're like all oh, right I meant that got that the whole way. <laughs> how the diving play he made oh. St. Pete changed the whole environment in that series first and third one out two out from McCormick grounds the first pitch to third Josh Young with a candy hop and a one two three six for Jordan Montgomery who's fired six scoreless in game one of the championship series. Wear what the players are wearing on field during the postseason. Check out the largest selection of authentic jerseys, caps, and t-shirts. Root your favorite team on at MLBShop.com. Jonah Heim, the lead off this seventh inning for the Rangers. They lead game one, two to nothing. Heim knocked in the first run with a single back in the second. At their second run and a home run from Leody Tavares. Best of sevens obviously are much different. And the strategies are much different than a best of five. Both these teams had a relatively 
easier time in their best of fives. Rangers won three straight. These two pitchers in the game right now going this length really helps as the series moves on. The more looks you get in the bullpen, the more guys that come out of the bullpen, we've already touched on what Texas's bullpen issues are, the better you're going to be served, even though there's two days off in the seven games. Both managers see, like what they see out of their starters. Three and on Heim. We saw what Jordan Alvarez did last year when he got one more look at Jose Alvarado yeah. in the World Series. Saw Alvarado four times, and on the fourth time, he hit the World Series clinching home run. Verlander's only walked one. Yeah. Three and one on Heim. Not nearly as much swing and miss for Verlander tonight. Three Ks, the one walk. And two runs on five Texas hits. 3 1 pitch. Heim pops it foul. And this is where Verlander is so dangerous because he can don't want throw any one of three pitches in the strike zone with movement. He can go to the slider, the curveball, and of course, we've seen the fastball get back in the count 3 2. Let's see what Verlander chooses on this 3 2 to Heim, starting the seventh. Oh, Fastball inside. is inside, and it's a leadoff walk. Wow, what a good pitch. So, how did we get here? We mentioned Jonah Heim had an RBI single. That was after Evan Carter had a hustle double back in the second to start the scoring. Leody Tavares, the Rangers' nine hitter, a long home run in the fifth. And the story tonight Jordan Montgomery, six scoreless innings against one of the top offenses in baseball. Still going. Nathaniel Lowe. Gunner at first, nobody out. Takes a change up low. Lowe went through a incredible stretch down this at the end of the season where fastballs were absolutely beating him. And he was really struggling. This is a powerful guy. Last year had unbelievable numbers. And then all of a sudden a 15 pitch at bat in the last series. And then a home run and a smile that lit up the entire dugout. And maybe he's gotten on track a little bit. And it Unleash some things. Mm -hmm. Okay, fouled off nine pitches in a row there. Fly down and hit that home run. Now Justin Verlander as we take a look at On the Road, brought to you by Wagoneer. Got his first World Series win in his eighth World Series start, game five last year. Of course, they finished that thing off in game six. Signs with the Mets, started the season on the injured list. Pitched better and better as the year went on, but the Mets just kept on fading, and he gets traded to the Astros. And had you seen this headline back in April, it would have been like, wait a minute, that's either yeah. a misprint or I'm seeing a link from last year. What do you mean Justin Verlander starts game one of the championship series for the Astros? This is outdated. This link is outdated. A lot of people thought in baseball, when you see this note right here, that doesn't happen very often. A lot of people thought that Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer were going to be in the playoffs this year. Yeah. Just for right. not for two different teams though. Right. We had head to head in this series. Scherzer, if you hadn't heard yet, is on this championship series roster. Likely going to start game three or four. One two to low and takes off. They pitched together in Detroit. They thought they were going to pitch together for a few years in New York, and now they are on opposite sides. Here in the postseason. Two two. Ball three. Well Justin hasn't had a ton of experience this year in the seventh and the eighth but when he's been in the seventh and the eighth he's given up nothing. Action in the bullpen. That's after Maris. On a 3 2, low hits it foul. Time at first, his leadoff walk. Another long AB going here. Low on 3 2 again. Fastball moves to the inside corner to get Verlander his fourth. Just such a 
veteran of the moment and a 3 2 pitch that could have been one pitch away from first and second nobody out dots it on the top of the strike zone hitter thinks it's going to be in comes back and catches the corner that's just an incredible 3 2 pitch and now it's young got a chase on a slider train on an aggressive hitter now we talked about Texas and Houston two totally different feelings in a close game Houston's more used to it they dealt with it they have had the stats on their side Texas not so much blown the most blown saves in the regular season they're tired of hearing about their bullpen so in the postseason their bullpen has been fantastic only really one game they gave up runs but it was a nine run lead yeah otherwise they virtually have given up nothing and so their confidence is growing. Well that's how you win 90 games and make the postseason even though you have one of the worst bullpen statistically in baseball they haven't been exposed for the most part and that's continued into this postseason. You know they didn't play very many one run games but when they did they had the third worst record in baseball in those games. And what's amazing about their team which speaks really to Bruce Bochy and his leadership they had so many gut punch losses Yeah. like it's hard to keep rebounding as a team when you lose that many. Two and two. Especially the way they finished, right? Having a rug pulled oh. out from under them in the division that they led all year. And then it's the old nemesis, the old demon that comes and gets them, the Astros, and they got to fly across the country, play those two games in St. Pete, sweep the Rays, go up to face the one seed, sweep the Orioles, and try to get off to a 6 and 0 start, getting themselves off of the deck to get this postseason run going. Full count. And the 100 pitch coming. Yeah, I think he's batter to batter right now. I think if he loses Young here, you may see Dusty come out and go to Neris to face Tavares. Ooh, hit the home run against him in the fifth. He's gone four on all three hitters in this inning. He strikes out Young, two out. That's just the luxury of knowing you can throw any pitch at any time. And here is Tavares as we take a look at StackCast 3D powered by Google Cloud, his first postseason home run. Hanging breaking ball. They go a long way. And you see exactly the distance, 398. Oh, Verlander got some help over there from Abreu picking that. So he's going to get a chance to finish off seven innings here facing Tavares walked his first time before hitting that homer. Another solid postseason start for Verlander Astros trying to get him some support get him off of the hook Here's a little jam shot base hit in the center field and Tavares has reached all three times. And that is going to do it for Verlander. The bottom of the order again for the Rangers. Big part of the story this postseason. Doing it again tonight. Baker to the bullpen. Justin Verlander, six and two thirds. The book not yet closed, but it's another strong one. The 40 year old Justin Verlander. You take an outing like that every single postseason game. Hector Neris for Marcus Simeon. Two on, two out in a two nothing game, seventh inning. First pitch fastballs poked foul. Simeon uh, doesn't miss many pitches over 95 miles an hour and doesn't miss pitches inside. Now Neris, very emotional reliever. If he gets it out here, he'll show some of it. He'll rely on that split, breaking ball, and then that fastball you just saw. Really a uh, three headed monster in this Astros bullpen. Neris, Abreu, Presley, usually seventh, eighth, ninth inning. Maybe not quite as dominant as last year's pen that was story of the postseason for the Astros, but still. Certainly a spot where they have an edge in this series head to head. One and two. Got that fastball by him. And that's where you got to go. Work off of that area because he is lightning quick. 
in the inner part of the plate. Here it comes to the one two. And the end foul ground. It's Jose Abreu. And it's pitch time in game one. The Rangers two, the Astros nothing. Duel. Leody Tavares, an unlikely character to have the big swing in this game. Home run in the fifth inning, two to nothing the score as we go to the bottom of the seventh. Justin Verlander was good, six and two thirds, just two runs. But as we welcome you inside, Jordan Montgomery has been even better. He sure has, and he might be batter to batter right now, but he has done everything that the Rangers could hope for because he's funky enough. He doesn't have a ton of swing and miss in general, but it has been lately, and he's really kept this Houston offense at bay. And it's an offense that came into this series really clicking, but needing the home run to score in that division series against the Twins. 80% of the runs came off of homers, and they've had five singles. They've made some noise and had some traffic, just haven't been able to push anything across. Yeah, they got the two out three singles in a row, but too firm to score with two outs. And he doesn't walk many batters. So here at 7 8 9, aggressive hitters, he could virtually get through this inning if he makes good pitches early in less than nine pitches, or like I think he'll go batter to batter unless somebody gets on and it's probably out. Mauricio Dubon leads off. He's one for two. 86 pitches for Montgomery. His 87th is upstairs in ball one. As we talk about that Rangers bullpen, they like what they have in the eighth in Chapman and in the ninth in LeClerc. Although Chapman is not the lockdown guaranteed. It's a wild ride when Aronis <laughs> comes in these days. So they're going to get whatever they can out of Montgomery. 2-0. There is the big man who has been a beast just about everywhere. This park, not one of those places. This has been a house of horrors for Rodas Chapman. And good patience early on a guy that loves to swing. And Dubon who waits on this 2-0. And hammers the ball. Hooking foul. Wow, he crushed that thing, but wide of the pole and strike one. Yeah, he's not a left-hander he doesn't like to hit off of when he gets up there and aggressive style he had a two home run game against the Rangers in September to one pitch into center field here comes to to make the grab six and a third score the innings for Jordan Montgomery and for more on the left hander here's Ken Rosenthal Joe you mentioned earlier that the Yankees traded Jordan Montgomery last season in part because they thought he would not make their postseason rotation well since the trade coming into this inning 3.10 ERA including postseason of his continued ascent Montgomery said I think everybody in the Yankees organization knows how hard I work so it was kind of bound to happen yeah what a moment for him tonight Seven scoreless innings in the wild card round, but here against this potent Houston lineup in this ballpark, six and a third scoreless innings against the Astros. Off to the Texas bullpen in a two nothing game. Fox has made a one million dollar donation to United Jewish Appeal as they mobilize to provide urgent relief to those impacted by the atrocities in Israel. If you'd like to join Fox with your support visit UJAFedNY.org. Jordan Montgomery in this postseason a 2 0 8 ERA. 
And hands it off to the bullpen with a 2 0 lead. After six and a third score this inning, Josh Spores comes on to pitch. Jeremy Payne is at the plate. Strike one. Heavy slider, fastball. And for this young man, if he connects and he can be the bridge to the eighth and the ninth, that is going to be huge for the Texas Rangers because he's going to have to get a lot of good right handed hitters off for the Astros. I mean, you look at those numbers, John, you're probably sitting there saying, How in the world is this guy in the game at this point? But he's been streaky when he's been good. He's been as dominant as anybody so far in this postseason. He has not given up a hit. To third, Young will hope that it stays foul and it does. Well, he's just got that great downward break, and then he's got a 97 mile an hour fastball to boot. And look, a lot of people may go, "Well, why did they let Montgomery pitch to one hitter in that inning?" Well, with one out and the new rules, if you got to face at least three hitters or get the last out of the inning, it just gives Bruce Bochy some opportunity here, wiggle room. If he doesn't have it going. He's got some guys that can come in and bail him out, but all he's got to do is get two outs this inning, and then he can decide what he wants to do in the eighth. And Bruce Bochy, who has won three World Series and garnered a reputation for being such a spectacular manager of the bullpen, decision maker in these tight situations, hands it off to the youngster and spores here. The seventh inning of game one. So ahead of Pena, one and two. When that rule came into play, the one thing that people were going to try to do is take advantage of the two out pitching changes because that two out pitching changes if you get one out then that they don't have to face three hitters you can start the next inning and face one guy or two guys you don't have to face three guys if you get the final out of the inning on one two he gets in on him The Maldonado, the catcher, is due next, but it's Yiner Diaz who's in the on deck circle, ready to pinch hit. 23 home runs as a rookie this year in limited time, despite a citywide call for more playing time from him. Two and two on Pena. All right, so for Pena and his aggressiveness, and he wants to expand the zone outside, you've got to make this breaking ball if your s'mores to get on the plate. That one never started on the plate, and so he didn't get a chance. He didn't get a chance to make that look like a strike. Pena choking up a little bit with two strikes. Backs up, popped up. Center field to Veras. Two up. Well, we've got game two of this series tomorrow as Rangers and Astros play at 3.30 Eastern. And then in prime time, the National League side gets going. Game one, Diamondbacks Phillies on TBS. El Diaz is announced as the pinch hitter, and you can hear the hand that he gets from this crowd that loves him. 282 hitter, 23 home runs in just 85 games started. And a hot topic in Houston all summer, why doesn't he play more? They look at him as the catcher of the future, but they've continued to commit to Martin Maldonado. When he had his opportunities, though, largely because Alvarez was hurt and he was DHing, this guy was awesome. Yeah, this is the future, and he is going to be a hit first catcher, and he definitely loves to slug. First pitch, bounces one to Seeger at short, chance to show off the arm, and it's picked by Lowe to finish off the seventh. Spores comes on, retires both men that he faces, and it's two to nothing after seven. Play ball is baseball's global youth initiative to highlight the fun and accessible ways to play our great game. To learn more, including how to find a league near you, go to playball.org and follow at playball on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Corey Seeger takes the first one from Hector Neris. That is a splitter of Neris. Yander Diaz, after pinch hitting for Maldonado, stays in, does the catching. Seeger's one for three, all those against Verlander. Neris came on, got the last out of the seven. And faces two, three, and four in the eighth. Two oh. Two and one. 
Well, the Rangers are the best against right-handed bat, right-handed pitchers, and certainly Verlander kept them at bay. It's well within striking distance. We talked about playing close games, two to nothing. That is Brian Abreu getting loose. Count. Running the second, running the fifth. It's been enough to this point. Thanks to Jordan Montgomery. Six and a third. And then Josh Shabor has got the last two outs of the seventh. Rangers trying to take game one in this best of seven. This all Texas showdown for the pennant. Free two pitch and Seeger chases. Strike three. Guy that's done the catching for those pitchers we're talking about is Jonah Heim, and he's with Ken Rosenthal. Jonah Jordan Montgomery brilliant tonight. What made him so successful? Uh, just let nail in all his pitches. He had command of all four and uh, made some big pitches when he needed to. We had some traffic and he, and he bared down and made a quality pitch. Jonah, thanks a lot. Joe, back to you. All right, Kenny. One gone in this eighth for Garver. Garver's glad to see Verlander's gone. Over you know, three today. And one for a lot in his career against Justin. Garver and Heim, pretty awesome catching duo. Heim pretty much catches every game, but when Heim was out, Garver was the guy starting. Hit 19 home runs in 87 games this year, did Garver. Moved the DH when Heim came back and got healthy. Hitting third for Texas. 0 2 from Hector Neris. Ball. Thirty two years old in his seventh year second one with the Rangers over from Minnesota. Now on this one two pitch shoots it up the middle for El Tuve kind of a knuckling box over there that El Tuve gobbles up. The two gone in this eighth inning trying to get to six and oh in the postseason where they have trailed for a total of one half inning. They trailed after the first inning in Baltimore and then had a huge second inning. That was game two on Sunday. One week ago today. And this is for a team who stumbled into the playoffs. You could not find polar opposites in the way they've gone from that last week of the regular season, the way this postseason has began. Yeah, and that's why I think, you know, they've got something special. It's hard to quantify. Well, what is special? What is the it factor? They have something that in inside that clubhouse. They're able to handle this roller coaster year. You, you just can't, you can't go through what they went through and end up where they're at right now without having something special. And whether that's the influence of that manager right there who is calm, cooled, and you'll hear a player's manager, and that's something most people don't understand. They think, well, players' managers, they get to do whatever they want. That's not what it means. The players' manager understands how hard it is to play the game, and there is going to be the ebb and flow. Garcia sends this one sky high left side of the infield Hector Neris has a one two three eight pitch has been good for the Astros tonight but the hitters trying to find something gonna have to deal with a roll as Chapman a guy they've had some moments against before as game one goes to the bottom of the eighth. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Round out your protection with life, phone, and pet health insurance. It is the anniversary of Game 1 of the 88 World Series and one of the iconic swings in baseball history. Kurt Gibson is walk-off home run. 2 nothing. Josh Moore stays on for Jose Altuve. Chapman's ready to go, but Altuve, of course, 5 of 11 with that pennant-winning home run against Chapman. Not going to face him here. The Astros are entering their sweet spot. And they score the most runs in baseball, seventh through the ninth inning. Yeah. And just because their lineup is so deep and they 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 know how to get it done, and this guy knows how to get it done in L2, especially in game ones. Game one is his specialty, even though the whole career of his postseason has been pretty good. Today's 0 for 3. 
Rangers or Astros have five hits, all singles. Two and one on Altuve. Bregman and Alvarez to follow. Here's the game one rings all time. The eight game one home runs the most all time. On a two one from Spores. Altuve looks at ball three. This is where Spores from time to time forgets to use his fastball because he goes so heavily with that slider. And Altuve has shown that patience that is different in the seventh through the ninth than it is in the first through the third innings. A floor. Wow, doesn't get the call there. And Altuve's got a leadoff walk. That was a pretty good pitch. Yeah, you'd think this is a pretty good pitch to Altuve. Maybe not a lot of other hitters, but <laughs> right across the knees, but it was called low. And that indeed is going to do it for Sabors. Bochi gets by Altuve. And now a call on Chapman with a tying run coming to the plate. Good one going in game one. I guess we'll never know. Oh, well, that four game finish, four game winning streak. They did win the division for the sixth time in seven years. And there is that man, Alex Bregman, who gave the toast, now trying to become the toast of the town. Step into the plate against Aronis Chapman in a 2 0 game. He's the right man for this moment. Even though he has not had a lot of success against Chapman, Chapman has lost the strike zone. And this is one guy that won't expand the strike zone. So if he gets him out, it's because he's thrown strikes and just beats the barrel of the bat to the ball. Tying run at the plate. Ball one. Rodas Chapman in this postseason has not given up a run in two and two thirds, even though he has walked four. He has lived on the edge, Johnny. There's been a lot of Pepco Bismo in that Ooh, dugout baby. when he gets in there, but you're right. He has walked the edge, walked some players, and then got some big outs. His 1 0 pitch to the back door, strike one. But he's done differently this year. He's always been a hard thrower, of course, 102, 103 back in the day, but now he's going more to his two seamer as he gets outs with that two seamer. It used to be all four seamer. 1 1. Check swing, no swing, ball two. Started the season with the Royals. Rangers struck first. Back in June, acquiring Chapman, first big deal this summer. He'll toss to first. The 2 1. Fly ball, left center field. Back goes low, onto the track, up the wall. Carter with a leap and a catch. Back to first goes Altuve. Evan Carter to the deepest part of left center field with a leaping grab. We talked about the Rangers and their ability to play and win most games by a lot. But I'm telling you right now, they're going to look at this to see if Altuve retouches second base. This is as far as you can hit the ball to left field. And Carter goes back and makes an incredible play. And what the Rangers are going to look at is see if, if Altuve retouches second. The Rangers have made three significant defensive plays in the postseason in the reason why they haven't lost a game. Let's see. Get a chance to look at his feet and see if he retouched right there. When you go past the bag, you have to touch the bag going back on a ball that is caught by an outfielder. Watch where he goes right there. He's checking it out. He steps across, and I don't know wow. if he stepped back. His foot was across the bag, but it was his other foot on it. I'm telling you, I think he's out. Based on that view, you have to retouch the bag. He went past the bag, and I don't know if that view showed that he retouched it coming back. The game two of the NLDS. 
Bryce Harper getting doubled off, did touch second, couldn't quite get back to first in time. I don't know if Altuve touched second, and our replay review is sponsored by Zoom. Great catch by Evan Carter in left field. And Al Altuve did everything you're supposed to do as a base runner. At this point, he's thinking, okay, if he doesn't catch this, I score. I'm standing at second base. But he kind of read that as, oh, I think he didn't catch it, and then had to make the last-minute move back to first base. And just because he was so close to getting across the bag, right there is the confusing part. See that? And then I don't think he retouched it. Getting back to first base. After review, the call on the field's overturned. The runner is out on appeal. Texas will retain their challenge. So a successful appeal from the Rangers, and it's a double play. That close to a game-tying home run. Instead, two out, bases empty. His feet get crossed up. If he takes two more steps to third base, automatically he would have touched second base going back. But because he thought he was parallel with the bag, his feet get crossed up. And he's just worried now about getting the first base, and unfortunately, he gets called out. Officially 7-6-4, double play. What a turn. Off of the bat, this place stood up, thought Exploded. that the game was maybe tied. Wrong part of the park to hit that ball, and at the wrong guy. Evan Carter in his first game in this tricky left field in Houston has been splendid. Alvarez, the base is empty, strike one yeah. from Chapman. He is 0 for 4 with 4 K's lifetime against Chapman in the postseason or including the postseason. And he struck out three times already tonight. Oh. One ball, one strike. Three of the four times the Rangers have faced him with the bases empty, too. Yeah, that's the key. I mean, that play right there, you just don't know what would have happened in the momentum of it being one out and man on first. No, no. It, it changes you know people talk about the what ifs and what could have happened well as a pitcher you realize okay that changes my pitch selection knowing the tying runs at plate and I'm facing Alvarez now I have more freedom to face him even if he hits a home run you still hold the lead. Soft bouncer. Lowe's got it. That's the inning. Again, Chapman lives on the edge. Gets some help from the kid, Evan Carter, in left field. He's made some plays in the corner today. Today he moves to his left, onto the track, takes it away, and a double play on appeal sends this team to the nine. Rangers up two to nothing. A run in the second, a run in the fifth, and here we go to the ninth. And Brian Abreu has been the best reliever in baseball since the middle part of the summer. Yeah, he's a power arm with power stuff and facing a kid that doesn't even know he's in the postseason, <laughs> according to Bruce Bochy. That is Evan Carter, who continues yeah. to just look so chill, no matter what's going on. And he is a center fielder by trade playing left because they have Tavares in center. And he's looked like it. He with sure the instincts has. moving around. Looked like it in that he's uh, he's got great instincts to move. Not look like a guy who's never been out left field prior to this big league stretch. Well, what's impressive about him is he's got an 0-2 count right here. Is he rarely swings and misses outside the zone and expand the zone. That's not normal for his kind of age. And they asked him, do you, you practice that? He goes, no, really don't. Just kind of happens and takes a lot of notes. And golly, the future's bright for him. Just outside. Incredible discipline in high school back in Elizabethton, Tennessee. That's where the Rangers found him, fell in love with that discipline, had it coming up through the minors, but how would it translate? I mean, often you see a guy with good strikeout to walk numbers in the minors, doesn't necessarily translate in the big leagues, but it has. Take hey. strike three here. And so much for that. Forget everything I said. He's down on strikes. One gone in the ninth, and a quick word from Capital One. We need a clutch hit. Derek Jeter. Hang in there, rookie. Here comes Heim, who has caught the eight shutout innings and knocked in a run. Facing Abreu. And he grounds the first pitch. Curve does Heim up the middle of the Pena. Two up and two down. Looking ahead to the bottom of the ninth. The Astros have the heart of the order coming up. Abreu, Tucker, and McCormick. 
Jose O'Clark has been the guy for the Rangers in what has been a revolving door in the ninth inning this year. Started the year as the closer, struggled, but finished the year as the closer and has thrived lately. Yeah, they could have never made it to the postseason if he didn't get back on his game and be dominant. And that's what they have now in the ninth inning. Less worried about that for sure. This this guy here. Ever since I saw him throw a pitch, I went. This is a body that if stays healthy, you're talking about closer stuff, and and certainly wouldn't surprise me if he becomes a lockdown closer at some point in his career. Come Didn't on, even right begin right playing right baseball right until he was 14. He was a basketball player prior to that point. And he had very little free time for sports anyways because from the time he was 12 he was working two jobs to help his family he worked a job in construction. He worked one at a body shop with his uncle who was a mechanic. And then he was more of a hitter than he was a pitcher at first but he gave pitching a try and changed his life. His 0 2 pitch tying away for ball one and that's the only issue he has he'll walk he'll get away from his mechanics falling big time to first base and you generate power you're not going to stand and finish over the middle of that mound you're going to fall one way or the other and as long as he stays in there longer he's tough to hit his one two check swing and a fastball low but he went around. So that is a one two three ninth inning for Abreu keeping it a two nothing game teeth of the lineup coming up Abreu Tucker McCormick two for the tie three for the win in game one. I want to hear what the most interesting man in sports has to say after a huge weekend in the NFL college football and of course Major League postseason so don't miss the herd with Colin Cowherd Monday at noon Eastern. Only on FS1. So here we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Last chance for the Astros down two to nothing. And they face off with Jose Leclerc, who will now, John, have pitched the ninth inning in all six games for Texas. Yeah, they're in good hands as far as what he has been able to do for the Rangers. Now, the deal is the opponents off of his slider only hitting 119. And on the game, the Astros are one for 13 on breaking balls tonight. So look for that pitch to be a big key if he gets through the Ninth inning against the Astros. Part of the order, Jose Abreu. It is a breaking ball low, one and zero. Abreu is one for three tonight. He'll be followed by Tucker and McCormick. Astros had their best chance in the fourth inning when they loaded the bases. They've brought up the minimum in the four innings since. Two and zero. When you're in this situation with a two-run lead. You've got to make as a closer you've got to make them hit their way on you cannot start the inning with a walk even if they hit a home run you're still that you still have that lead you don't want the tying run on via a walk Two and one it, it really is number one principle to try to stay away from because there is all this adrenaline and you know if you get three outs you win the game you just can't create a walk to get a rally going. Jose Abreu first year Astro finding it lately takes ball three see now right here he has to put a fastball in the zone and make him do something with it he's trying to swing get a swing and miss of course by throwing that slider that we already documented is very difficult to hit all star Tucker on deck three one to Jose Abreu is lifted to center field to Veris has it for the first out of the ninth and that's a great job down in the zone got a got a lot out and now a quick word from Evan Williams bourbon reach for a fan favorite Evan Williams 1783 small batch when bourbon's done right people notice and now you get to face Kyle Tucker with the bases empty all bets are off when the one swing can tie the game that's when you don't you know even a walk in that situation to pitch around the count but when you have a lead be aggressive in the strike zone obviously trying to make great pitches. She does strike one. Now this Texas pitching staff had a 428 ERA during the regular season. 220 during the postseason. Their pitching coach Mike Maddox looks on. One gone in the ninth. Check swing. He went around and it's 0 and 2. We talked about the arm action of Montgomery from the left side. This arm action is lightning quick for Leclerc, and he just ties him up with an inside slider that looked like a fastball when it was getting. Oh, 2 and lays off ball one. Chaz McCormick's on deck. 
This Rangers team, the headline is what they do with the bats. They just bludgeon people offensively. Tonight, though, just enough offensively. Pitching the story of game one with one gone in the ninth. Two and two on Tucker. Simeon gets rid of it quickly for out number wow. two. I mean, that is as textbook. He knew he didn't have to get much on the throw, but his transfer from the glove to the hand was so quick. It's like turning a double play, a mini double play. Watch how quick he gets that slow motion, so it's not going to look as fast. But in real time, that was a quick transition. Defense shows up again for the Rangers. Astros down to their last out in game one. And Chaz McCormick trying to keep their hopes alive. Michael Brantley has stepped yeah. into the on deck circle. If McCormick can get it to him. One for three today. We've got this Rangers team after a six year playoff drought. Two years removed from losing more than 100 games. And after blowing the division in the final weekend steamrolling their way to this championship series and out away from starting the postseason 6 and 0. Oh. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Ball 2 on McCormick. Same principle here McCormick looking to go center to right center but will hit a mistake and pull it with power. Try to get the game to Brantley. On a 2 on McCormick gets out of the way just barely back to back heaters have gotten away from the clerk. Well, obviously, it's not what he's trying to do now. Another three and one count. The first time he had three and one count, he got a fly ball, long fly ball to center. As you see the ball just misses. McCormick with his closed stance. Hard to get out of the base sometimes when you got a stance like that. Here's a three one pitch. Three and two. Loud front found that fastball and got it by him. I know a signature pitch is the slider, but if it's going to be the slider, it has to be in the strike zone for a long time. Astros down to their last strike. Leclerc's 3 2 pitch. Got him! And the Texas Rangers keep on rolling with game one in the championship series, 2 to nothing over the Astros. Well, you started by asking me in the open. This is going to be an epic series and this is not going to be a series I think that gets away from anybody. I think we're going to see games like this. We might see a six to five eight to seven game. And you see what winner of game one does in a best of seven obviously much bigger percentage when it's a best of five but best of seven still has 64 percent. And in two hours and 49 minutes the Rangers take game one this tidy game one with a run in the second a run in the fifth. They did it without the top of the order guys like Seeger doing much of anything. In fact Seeger had the only hit out of the top four in the lineup. It was the bottom of Bruce Bochy's order that got it done which has continued to be a theme in this postseason. Well just a really well pitched game and flirted with a little bit of disaster getting behind in the count but working his way back was Leclerc and the Rangers get to talk about their bullpen again and this Arlington sitting there waiting for their team to come home for huge playoff games Bruce Bochy no big deal yeah a little watch party back in Arlington down to the field Ken Rosenthal thanks Joe Evan eighth inning runner on first Alex Bregman hits that ball to the wall off the bat what did you think you know we were, we were playing pull on him right there so it's kind of funky just to be able to run around the wall right there I was hoping that it would uh it wouldn't go over right there you know if it would have been a couple feet to the left it might have but uh, you know that played to our favor right there and you know just trying to play a tough wall back there um, so it worked out well. You made your major league debut September 8th. You had never played in this park. How did you prepare to play left field here. 
Yeah, it's definitely different. Um, you know, Robbie Grossman, who's played here in the past, you know, I, I picked his brain a lot today. Um, we walked around the outfield uh, today and yesterday, both just throwing balls off the wall, figuring out how to play it. So, you know, he's, he's helped me out a lot. Double off Justin Verlander in the second inning. He scored the Rangers' first run. Evan, you're playing in the American League Championship Series. You're facing future Hall of Famers. How are you staying so calm? Oh, my gosh, this is so much fun. That's just all I think about. Um, where else would I want to be, man? This is this is awesome. Uh, I just try and, you know, keep my feet grounded and just uh, keep rolling with this team. This has been a lot of fun. Evan, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, back to you. Evan Carter, 21 years old. You'd never know it, and you'd never know that Leody Tavares was a light-hitting nine-hitter. He's got the big swing of the game. It's a solo home run against Justin Verlander, and the Rangers take game one, two to nothing. They've got Nathan Avaldi lined up for game two tomorrow against Houston's Framber Valdez. These guys getting ready, getting pretty for you. Maddie V and the boys will have the post game on the other side of this break.